Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We have uh, Navneet uh, Chitkara Ji from Vyasa uh, Astro Channel. And uh, I'm delighted to interview him for the first time. Uh, recently, he had interviewed me, or rather, it was a beautiful conversation which we had on free will and destiny, karma, astrology, and how to see how much free will uh, anybody has. And he also gave his amazing insights. And that video I had uploaded to my channel and he had also uploaded to his channel. And uh, it seems uh, many of you really loved uh, our conversation. And uh, he recently approached me saying that we should do another session. And then I was like, yes, we will do another. But this time you have to be uh, on the... Uh, uh, speakers and so I will be interviewing you so uh, Namni ji is a very amazing astrologer and he has uh, his very beautiful website which I am uh, looking through now uh, name is you know Rudra Vedic Academy that's the name yeah. and um, of course he does consultations and he has so many astrology courses or on different astrological topics and i also see he has courses on gemology palmistry vastu i mean i'll just pin the website down in the description section and also he has a youtube channel and he uh, as uh, we were discussing he was telling me that uh, there are like students from all over the world like 18 different countries of the world who are studying yeah. under him uh, who are very fortunate of course uh, so, Navni ji, welcome to Exotic Astrology. This is the first time you are here and please enlighten me and the viewers of Exotic Astrology. Uh, what are you going yeah. to speak today? Looking forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Baba Ji ji. And such a, such a pleasure and such a delight to be, you know, there on the channel. And, uh, you know, I've grown up, uh, you know, in astrology, uh, you know, from the blessings of my guru Sanjay Ratchi and, uh, you know, Arjun Pai. And then I've seen lots and lots of your videos when I was, uh, you know, grooming myself in Jyotish. And then I never thought in my life that I would be coming on this platform and I'll be doing videos together, uh, you know, with you. <laughs> such, a, such a delight. And, uh, and the first video has come in such an auspicious month of Shravana. Right, and this is this is the purest, and uh, you know it is the strongest blessing, uh, which is directly coming from Vishnu and Shiva. I'm sure about that. There's no doubt about it, and uh, you know I'm I'm absolutely excited, delighted, charged up, uh, you know, on your channel. Thank you for you know inviting me on your channel, Baba Ji. Thank you. My my pleasure. Very good to have you here. Yeah. So what topic, uh, Babaji ji, you know, you want me to come up with? Uh, I was thinking it's the month of Shravan and as you said, uh, we yes. discussed uh, a bit on uh, this month and what are the things that we can do and yeah. significance of this month and yeah, remedies yeah. or anything which we can do to improve yeah. our life or to tune into that higher energy. So yeah. that yeah. will be a very good topic, I hope. Today. <laughs> no, thank you. See, so, you know what? Uh, I have the first thing I would like to tell you is that we both share the common date of birth. Okay, so uh, this is something uh, you know, uh, something great. And the second thing I want to tell you is that I always loved somehow the month of Shravana. We call it in North India called Savan. Right, because you know, I was born very near to the Savan, and so are you, sir. Right, because uh, you know, we, we our birth is in the Savan actually. You know, when I was born somewhere in 19, you know, some that date, you know, it was very close uh, uh, to the Savan month, and uh, it was raining outside, it was thundering outside when I was born. And I expect something like you know, from yours also, because you're also born in the same month, right, and almost in the same <laughs> date. So, right, so Shravna, uh, you know, the first thing I always wanted to understand when I started learning Jyotish was that why in the Vedic system, we have these months named, uh, you know, under the name of nakshatras, right? So out of the uh, 27 nakshatra belt, we have 
you know 12 nakshatras representing the 12 vedic months right so so now the, the, the system is that when we ever have the puranmashi or the purnima right and when moon is in a particular nakshatra on a puranmashi that nakshatra is named on the month of that particular month you know that so like we have shravana where uh, you know the moon is in the in the shravana nakshatra in the purnima so which mm -hmm. is coming on 21st of uh, august and we have rakshabandhan that day as well right so every moon purnima is a festival like there is the the guru purnima which was in the ashada purnima okay. right so that was the guru purnima like just similarly we have buddh purnima also on the purnima of a particular nakshatra, right? So all the Purnimas, the 12 Purnimas, they fall in a particular nakshatra and the name of that nakshatra becomes the name of that month. So that is the first thing. Now to understand the Shravana nakshatra, so the Shravana month, we have to understand the Shravana nakshatra, right? To understand the Shravana nakshatra, we must understand all the three, you know, nakshatras of the moon, very, very important. Right, then we'll understand that why, right, out of all the three nakshatras of the moon, right, the Purnima was into the Shravana, not into Rohini or, you know, Hasta, right. So that is where we'll try to figure out. So what I'll do is my favorite, uh, you know, SOP is to, you know, play on the whiteboard. So I would need your permission to, sure, you know, sure, share right. my whiteboard with you so that, you know, I can start, uh, and this is also something that my students like a lot, right? Okay. And we always do a lot of things on a very, very conventional way. You know, it feels like, you know, I'm doing it with my hands, right? And they love it, right? Though my handwriting and drawing is very, very bad, right? <laughs> However, so you got to bear with me with that. So, you know, we're talking about the moon, right? Now, moon is basically, you know, uh, he, he, he leads three, nakshatras that we have right so uh, we have rohini to begin with right and uh, rohini is in in the taurus i'll just write two and then we have the hasta right, right. Uh, you know which falls in the virgo the six and then we have the shravna right so we have this shravna here or shravan uh, nakshatra and this this falls in the Capricorn in the tenth, Capricorn. right? And uh, the the zodiac uh, the the degree will be see is the it starts from ten degree of Taurus to twenty three degree and twenty minutes of Taurus, right? This is the Rohini, and so is the Hasta. So it, it is the same, you know, for all the three the degree. But see in the Shravna, the first things that catches in the Shravna, it is, it is the Janama Nakshatra of Vishnuji, right? It is right. the Jan. Yeah. And also, you know, the, uh, the Pushkar Navamsha and the Pushkar Bhava, they both fall in the Shravna, right? So that's, that's another thing. The third most important thing is, that you know uh, when the sagar manthan was happening you know to get that amrit the nectar right yeah. that manthan happened in the month of shravana okay, okay. so that the month in which yeah the month in which the sagar manthan has happened right between the devatas and the asuras and they were all fighting for you know the amrit right that was the month you know, that was the, the was the Shravan Mantra. Now, okay. now to understand the Shravan Mantra, we'll have to make this Shravana Nakshatra as a Lagna. So once we make okay. this as a Lagna, we'll understand so many things. So what we'll do is, let me go ahead and, you know, make a small chart. And I'll tell you what happens, you know, after the magic starts from here. Right. So, you know, in a lot of YouTube videos, we are seeing that, you know, people are saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that. It is very auspicious. It is 
for shiva you know people uh, you know uh, they they are dedicate this month you know month to shiva but then the most important thing is to understand that why shiva right what what significant happened so for that you know we'll make this shravana nakshatra as a lagna to understand the the shravan month right so okay. i'll write 10 here which is the capricorn and then 11 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 and 9 see all the three moon nakshatras are going to take the place of 1 5 and 9 right so here we have the shravana right so we have shravana here and then we have rohini here right and we have the hasta here okay now see this is the janma nakshatra of vishnu ji correct now vishnu ji says that when the sagar manthan was happening the amrit was about to come prior to that you know there was a lot of halahal so halahal yes. is that the venom the zahir that has come Correct. out Correct. right and and everyone was like oh now it's over it's not going to happen so narad ji was the one who said okay we'll call shiva he's the one who can solve this issue so he was called and he just drank all the halahal right so what do you mean by the poison so what all poison you know the exact meaning of the poison the halahal is are all the shadripus that we have right so 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 see vishnu sitting here is looking at shiva hasta is actually shiva right so if 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 rohini is the prajapati brahma you know yes yes the Lord Shiva, prajapati yes right the brahma right so yeah. vishnu is over here anyways the lordship of shravana is with vishnu ji right. right so vishnu ji is here the third trikon has to be shiva correct Perfect. under any circumstances correct any has circumstances so it so has to be now here we have hasta so the 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 deities the energies of hasta is savitur right right so savitur is one of the 12 adityas right and exactly. you know yeah and we have vishvakarma right who yes. has designed you know all the bhavans and emanations and sudarshan chakras everything is designed by vishvakarma right all the weapons of the devtas are designed by vishvakarma right? right so we have these energies here and we have that story of shiva you know presenting uh, the sudarshan chakra to vishnu ji right when he was praying with 1008 lotus flowers so many stories are there in the classics so so now the shiva had the poison you know and shiva had the poison and and, and vishnu ji said that for me you know i mean see i am the supreme power right it is my desire from where the brahma and shiva is there but on the same time right my guru see see, see raja ram took janma in a particular nakshatra called punarvasu so do you think that why was he born in punarvasu it was his leela to tell everyone that you know you're supposed to be like that you know so ninth from the punarvasu fifth from the punarvasu so that was the leela similarly vishnu ji the janam nakshatra is not assigned to vishnu ji vishnu ji will you know, choose a nakshatra okay so he'll choose a nakshatra so he chose the shravana because he knew the ninth from the Shravna, you know, in the ninth house from the Shravna or the Zodiac is going to be Shiva. So Shiva is the one who is going to be the protector. So from here, you know, your guru is always your protector, the ninth right. house. 
right the pro- the protection is coming from the guru right forget about spirituality religion whatever you know the protection you know is always coming from the guru so the first protection was coming from the mother when you were in the correct. womb so mother becomes the first guru correct you know so mother mother becomes the first guru right and and so on so so vishnu ji is trying to do a leela you know by saying that shiva is ninth from me right so shiva will save and protect all the devatas right so he did he did and he did it in the shravana month right so all the devatas has given had dedicated this month to shiva right mm-hmm. now that is the significance now he says that the lord of here shravana is shani right so shani says that i also get my protection from shiva because he is the destroyer your swas you know the udana samana vayu that we have you know i have i had videos on different types of samana vayu and different types of vayus that shani represents so for shani also it is the shiva which is protecting shani as well right that is why the hasta is represented by a by a hand right oh, so okay. you know so it is represented by a hand and in the hand what do we have right we have the basically we have the three major lines in the hand right so one of them is called the mind you know mastiks rekha right and then the other one is called the lifeline life right and similarly we have the brain line right brain. so this hasta has two more energies here the energies is the lordship of the rashis with the mercury yeah. the buddha correct right lord. and and the lord is the chandra of the correct of the hasta so here we see the the mind line is coming from the moon right the brain line is coming from the mercury and the hasta and the life line is coming from the shiva because shiva will decide no shani wants to you know say okay these many years these many minutes and seconds you'll have to come back but then that final approval you know after showing all your prarab is coming from shiva right so when vishvakarma had designed you know the body structure the palms right because vishvakarma is a designer he he doesn't he, he just not designed the 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 mahal or the uh, all the palaces or uh, you know or the weapons you know he has designed he has architect the the sharira also for shiva because he gave the recommendation that this is how it has to be right so from here he said the hasta will have three energies primarily the moon the mercury and the shiva right so the 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 lifeline is coming from shiva and lifeline directly belongs to a planet called shani saturn because you know until and unless <clears throat> shiva will not sign your death right the destruction right saturn has no ability Correct. saturn is zero right so the longevity you know is also coming from here right so now to have the mind which is meditation the mercury which is vishnu right your intelligence the lagna right and your longevity everything revolves around one energy called shiva right and shiva is is treated as a guru you know is a leela of vishnu ji that he is saying for me also you know my guiding force my poison right as everything is taken by shiva and i dedicate this shravan month to shiva that whosoever will pray in the shravan month keep upavasa right and do shiva chanting and go to ganga ji bring the water and apne jitne bhi paap dhoenge or burn all your bad karmas so 
all those bad shudri poos and karmas will be taken away by shiva he'll take it he'll say okay give it to me right whatever you have the poison that you have just give it to me i'll take it i know how to manage it i'll do it so this is how this is importance of the shravana right wow. that this is this entire month is dedicated to shiva right and on the same time now the question was that vishnu ji need energy of the other planets also especially the surya devata now my guru ji you know used to say that navneet surya takes all the three forms in a day he takes the form of a brahma he takes the form of the vishnu and form of the shiva i said guru ji how so he said when the day starts in the early morning right the surya devta is the brahma so when he okay. operates at the full strength right in the 10th house the complete strength 12 1 o'clock you know nobody can even look at him he is at the 100% strength he is vishnu right and when the night come he is going right he is leaving everything then he becomes the shiva right so brahma vishnu shiva is the adityas so so right. here there is another aditya called savitur which is also associated with the hasta right is is he associated with hasta or shravana right hasta yes. right now right. the savitur right the savitur is what savitur is one of the adityas of the surya devata right 12 adityas yes 12 adityas now my guru ji says uh, baba ji ji that no prayer no prayer cannot i mean can it cannot be complete without keeping surya devata in the loop yeah. okay okay yeah. so that is why you know you need to uh, you know you need to start your day with the gayatri mantra right only then other mantras will give you the effect if you've started your day with the gayatri right and that is how it says om bhur bhuva swaha tat savitur vareniyam bhargo yes. devasya dhimahi diyo yona prachodaya so you know surya devata is a medium between your prayers and vishnu ji right so until and unless you don't have surya sakshi right surya devta has to be the sakshi sakshi means that he has to be you know uh, the gavaha you know he has to be one person who is standing with you and you know converting your prayers into the light and that light is reaching your devata to whom you are praying so that is what the actual uh, responsibility of the surya devata so you see in every shravana nakshatra right or in the shravan month the surya is in two very important nakshatras one is in the in the the punarvasu and second is the pushya the punarvasu right. is the repetition and the right. pushya is the nourishment right right so that is why the repetition and the nourishment is being you know whatever you doing whatever prayers you are doing that is communicated through surya devta to the shiva right and shiva since it is coming from the punarvasu and pushya you know so lot of nourishment is coming back so you know the 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 law of light is to reflect back the things correct right? so i can you can see me yellow because i am reflecting yellow right so yes. it is reflecting the nourishment and repetition right within within this month right because surya devta is in these two nakshatras right so that is why it is said that if you keep only four or five i mean fortunately or unfortunately we have only four somvaras in this avan in this so like if you have four or five you know somvars or or mondays and if you keep an upavasa so it is considered equal to 16 upavasas or maybe the upavasas of one year because it is right. getting the nourishment it is getting the nourishment and the repetition from from pushya and punarvasu okay, you know pushya excellent. is complete nourishment yeah and pushya is the repetition 
right? Second time, third time, fourth time, right? So that is punar. Punar means repeating things, correct, right? Correct. So, so, so in the shravana, the aim which Srishti is giving us is to, you know, just leave our poison to Shiva because Shiva is happy to take your poison. The only thing he wants from you is the that you should be very, very clear with your shadri pose. You know, he doesn't want any fancy mantras. You know, just even if you say Shiva, 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 you know, or you say Om Namah Shivai or Om Shivai Namaha, the Panchakshari, right? Or just the Shivai Namaha, the, the, the very beautiful. So Shivai Namaha was one mantra that was done by Ma Parvati to achieve Shiva. Right, so he was. She was doing the panchakshari. The panch, the, the panchakshari goes to the fifth house straight away. Right, it is going to right. the fifth house. The fifth house is where you get your love, where you get your romance. Right, where you get your, you know, the fifth house is where you actually find the true love. Right. right. So it was the Shivai Namha. So he said, she says that Shiva is even bigger than the Namha or the Om for me. So I'll say Shivai and the Namha. So that that Panchakshari, with this Panchakshari, Ma Parvati has achieved Shiva. Right? So these mantras like Shivai Namha, Om Namah Shivai, and then there are mantras pertaining to Yam, you know, mantras pertaining to Vam Avtara, like Om Shim Shivai Namha. Om Vam Shivai Namaha, Om Yam Shivai Namaha. So these are the mantras, you know, that you can, you know, recite and chant. But if you want to be very simple, just keep saying Om Namah Shivai at least 16 rounds, you know, every day, just like we do as Vaishnavas do Krishna Maha Mantra 16 rounds. I mean, this is minimum. I've seen, you know, Vaishnavas doing 32, 64, and even more rounds than that. Uh, right? One zero so, eight. One zero eight also. So like so you know, so you, at least if you do 16 rounds of Om Namah Shivai. And also you see, you know, uh, the 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 hasta here in the Shiva is also the north direction in the chart. So if this is east, no, this is south, I'm seeing this is south, right? So with the south and you know, this is west and this is north. So here, when this is south, you see in Kerala, there is a festival called Onam. Yes. You know, that is also celebrated, you know, in the Shravana, right? And then again, is it, is it? Yeah, we oh. have to check this Onam. Yeah. I can quickly it check it. Yeah, you can check it because I feel because this uh, this onam is yeah 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 correct correct twelfth twelfth to twenty third August correct yes so it is in the <laughs> shravana so what what happens here is that this is the story of the of the Bali Maharaj you know so okay. Bali you know he wanted the entire world he wanted to be the next Indra right correct so. The Vam, the Vaman of Tara, he went there and he, he became a boy and that story is there. He took the three steps, you know. So, Hasta is also represented by three steps, Correct. you know. So, Correct. he took those three steps and, you know, then, uh, you know, he, that was actually Vishnuji, right? right? And, and you know what, all the Tantra Vidyas in India. So, I was researching that where it is coming from. So all the Tantra Vidya in India is either coming from the West or, uh, you know, sorry, it's coming from the East, you know, towards the West Bengal and that side, or it is coming from the Kerala. Okay. okay. So a lot of, lot of Tantra Vidyas, a lot of Asura Vidyas is coming from the, and you see Kerala is exact Southwest of India. Ah, Okay. Right, the exact southwest side is the Kerala, so it is coming from there. And you know, the exact southwest is where you have the Asuras. So, what do we have in southwest? We have Rahu, right? The energy of the Rahu and the all the Asuras. So that means Shiva will also become the Lord of 
all the tantra, the agam, nigam, and the tantra vidya as well. Okay. Right? So that is also Vishnuji is saying that Shiva sitting in the ninth house from me is exactly the southwest of the zodiac, and from there, you know, he is going to control that as well. So unka jo zahar hai, wo bhi Shiva is going to have it. Right. So Shiva is going to have that zahar also. So Shiva has that capacity, and if we pray to Shiva with our heart and soul open, you know. Uh, this is a time when he'll take away all our shadrikus, you know, calm, crowth, lobe, mo, all the all the negativity. So these are the shadrikus that we have, right? So this Shravana month, just keep it simple. Upavasa means up means which is close, and vasa means inside. So technically, you know, upavasa is not that you're not eating food. Upavasa is that you are Shiva conscious whole day, 24 hours. So you can only be Shiva conscious or Krishna conscious if your energy and blood is not going in the stomach. Right? It is here, up. Uh-huh, so that is okay. why it says that you eat little bit, eat limited, right? So that, you know, once we have food, we feel little dizzy, you want to have some, some sweet after that, you want to sleep for some time. He said, no, no, no. Upvasa means that 24 hours you need to be conscious. And you can only be conscious when you are not fully, you know, you've not fully filled your stomach, right? And you have to eat very sattvic because Shiva is the highest form of sattvicta, the highest level of auspiciousness. That is actually Shiva, right? So according yes, to me, that's the meaning yeah. of the word, all ausp- uh, most auspicious, yeah. all auspicious. So, so that is how we, I feel that the Shravana is a time to give up all your shadripus, to give up all and just surrender to Shiva and give away that, okay, I have Kam, I have Krodha, I have Loba, I have Moha. It is very difficult for me to give up all these things, but I surrender and I bow my head on your lotus feet and I'll recite Om Namah Shivai. Please ask Surya Devata, right, to, you know, take my prayers and, you know, make it make them reach to you and reflect back you know your uh, your blessings to me right i'll also will be doing gayatri mantra in the morning i'll start with surya namaskara i'll do all my steps i'll do a gayatri and then whole day i'll chant om namah shivai in the shravan mantra and for next 11 months right you will see significant changes around you in terms of your mentality about looking things, about your mindset of what people are do- saying and doing for you, that everything will change. See, the change that has come to me, Baba Jiti, is that I have felt a very sacrificing nature. You know, I have started sacrificing so many things without even thinking, which is actually the energy of Shiva, right? My mother used to say that whatever God you pray, the qualities of that God will come in you. That is for okay. sure. Right? If you pray Krishna a lot, right, you will become like always happy and you know, always in, in a very, very uh, sattvic luxury, right? If you are Shiva, if, if you are praying Krishna, and if you're praying Shiva, you will become, you'll take all the negative energy from others, you'll keep it within you and still remain very, very auspicious. Right. Perfect. So that's that's and I've, I've seen a lot of Shiva followers, you know, who are very sacrificing, you know, who, who remain little isolated, right? Always taking, you know, negative negativity from others and trying to convert them into positivity, doing a lot of meditation, right? And very close to Jala, because then the, the only way Shiva can say that okay, I'm blessing you is through rain. Right. So Shiva say, I'll give you all the rains in the Savar. Right? So you need, okay. not, you need not give water to your crops. I am there. Just keep praying and I'll shower everything on you. Right? So that is why we have maximum rains in the Savan. Right? That is the natural, natural blessing of Shiva which is coming. So this is how, I mean, any Devata or any energy will give you blessings only through Mother Nature. So we need to understand that why rains in the Shravana only, because it is directly coming from Shiva. 
and moon is sitting on the head of shiva and he's helping shiva what else can i do for you so he is the source right so this yes. is my you know take home for the shravana uh, you know month and this is how we scientifically understand this well <laughs> i've had a lot of recordings uh, but yeah this recording was very special because i think rarely have, have i ever discussed on the months and as you very beautifully touched on why uh, the punimas are associated with these nakshatras and the 12 names are given for the months and of course very beautifully you showed the hand also how yeah. uh, all the three are connected and how beautifully uh, uh, brahma vishnu and shiva this harmony is playing out and at the end of course uh, you spoke about lord shiva that his capacity to drink poison that is yeah that is uh, beyond imagination uh, uh, in fact uh, i had also heard something similar about uh, lord shiva once i was attending a lecture long time back so the the speaker was telling that when this universe was clouded by the kalkut wish when this yeah. sagar manthan as you said yeah. which started yeah. then it was appearing as if the entire world the entire universe will be destroyed so who will yes. be taking this poison yes. and then when lord shiva took this poison very mercifully then it is said that mother parvati uh, goddess yeah. parvati had out of her love for lord shiva yeah yeah she had uh, put her hand in his uh, neck. neck yeah yeah and that prevented the poison to go down uh, from down. his neck so yeah. and that is why he is yeah. known as nilkant one whose uh, yeah. neck is blue in color yeah yeah but uh, the speaker was telling me that the acharyas explain that even yeah. if that poison even if she would have not kept it here yeah. even if that yeah. poison would have gone down into his yeah. body <laughs> <laughs> still even then he yeah. would have remained unaffected by it yeah so, yeah yeah so at our level how do we understand this at our level uh, we understand this in a way that to our capacity now of course we are not shiva that we can drink all the yeah. poison and still we not be affected some yeah. people are like that but yeah. everybody is like that to to no. a different extent to a very to elevated yeah. person yeah. will yeah. be like shiva to a very big extent a very yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we also have to see in our life uh, considering yeah. our duties our materialistic responsibilities yes. to what extent yes. can we be like that so for example Absolutely. as uh, uh, in shrimad bhagavatam also it is said yeah. uh, lord shiva he is one of the 12 mahajans you know, there are the 12 mahajans yes. yes and mahajans are great personalities uh, who exemplify yeah. religious conduct religious principles uh, not just by words by their behavior uh, they are like yes. acharyas yes. which yes. who are uh, preached by their own example actually yes so yes. they and the bhagavatam also says uh, that uh, mahajano yena gata sapanta that we should try to follow in the footsteps of the mahajans fantastic so therefore in our life also as you said uh, we should try to see to what extent can we uh, be like lord shiva that yeah. we can take some negativity but we are not yes. affected by it yes. because yes. Uh, in the shrimad bhagavatam it is said that when daksh prajapati his yeah. uh, supposedly his uh, father in law was he yes. he is yes. not like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and daksh prajapati came into uh, the yagya uh, where yeah. lord brahma was also sitting yeah. then yeah. everybody yeah. stood up in the yagya pati devi's father yeah. except yeah. this two brahma and shiva and prajapati yes. daksh is the son of brahma so yes. he did not mind my father has not stood up you know it's it's not a big deal of course he's my father you know nobody <laughs> expects your father to come and pay homage on to you <laughs> so then shiva was his shiva son in law yeah. as per yeah, relation yeah yeah so he was so egoistic that he thought that lord shiva should stand up no? stand and, yeah yeah in respects to him of course so yeah so he had this narrow mindset that yes sati is my daughter and this yeah. person yeah. is you know my daughter's husband yeah. how dare he not stand up 
Yeah. But the Bhagavatam explains that Lord Shiva, why did he not stand up? Not yeah. because he was thinking, oh, anyways, who is this yeah. Dakshayan? Or this is this person is nobody in front yeah. of me. He may be my father-in-law. How does it matter? Yeah. No. But I am Shiva yeah. after all. You know that was not the reason, yeah. because yeah. he was uh, fixed in trance. You know he was at a very high stage. He was least concerned about what was going on in that yagya or you know who came, yeah. who paid obeisance. <laughs> and I mean, he was in a different state. So that is why he. Yeah, that is why he did not uh, pay, uh, he did not get up right yeah. but then daksha became very angry and he you know offended lord shiva there and then later on of course virabhadra came and he got a goat head uh, as the bhagavatam yeah. says yeah. And later on he begged forgiveness and yeah lord shiva yeah. gave him this goat head so yes so the thing is that when when he insulted lord shiva lord shiva did not you know, yeah. counter him back, or he did yeah. not, you know, punish him or kill him or do something yeah. like so. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he could have done it, who is Daksha in front yeah. of Shiva? You know, he's like, yeah. there's no yeah. comparison, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But he tolerated that. He did not do so. Right. And uh, yeah. he he really exemplifies this quality of uh, simplicity. You know, yes. as uh, he he uh, has this. Uh, he, he can get anything, he can do anything that he wishes, but he's still, uh, he, he doesn't have a home, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, yes is, that is yes. why Lord Shiva is also referred sometimes to as Aniket. Aniket means one who yeah. is homeless. Yes. So, yes. in fact, that's the fun that uh, he, he is known yes. to bless so many people, like especially so many Asuras with, you know, luxuries, home, yes, the yes. pleasures of the heavens, beautiful woman, yes. you know, richness, yes. beauty, intelligence, yes. Yes. wealth, yes. prosperity, but he yes. himself is homeless, actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and, that, the, that, and the marriages, and the marriages as well, you know, the people who want to have a good life partner. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. You know, he he himself doesn't, uh, yeah. as as yeah. they say, subscribe to <laughs> yes. all these yes. materialistic pleasures. But whoever prays him, they definitely are blessed by him. So, yeah. he really exemplifies simplicity and uh, he exemplifies this uh, sacrificing nature that, yes, I may be in difficulty, but if that yeah. person's life improves because of my difficulty, then so be it. It's worth it. So therefore, Absolutely. we should really be inspired by these two qualities of Lord Shiva. That we, yes. we maintain a simple life, which means we take that which is required for ourselves. Correct. Now, out of our karma, we may have, you know, we may be very rich. Many times people think that yeah. being simple is like, oh, you know, you should not have a home, you should not have a car, you should uh, not have anything, you know, just live like a beggar, sleep, sleep, no, you know, in, in a tree, you know, don't wear anything. That is, of course, one definition of simplicity, but yes. the scriptures explain there are many, de many definitions of yeah. being simple, yeah. you know, so suppose if yeah. there is a billionaire, uh, a yeah. billionaire's child, uh, that he may, uh, he, he may, from his childhood, he may roam in a Mercedes, or maybe in yeah. a very a wealthy car, you know, because that's how his lifestyle is, right? So for him, right. the definition of simplicity will be different compared Absolutely. to a middle class person, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The definition Absolutely. of simplicity for the son or daughter of a beggar will be different, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so simplicity you know, I, at our yes. level, yes. Yeah. yeah you please, know, yes, I please. had an experience of simplicity was that I got this opportunity of uh, you know someone who was a millionaire who just came to my home oh, right okay. and uh, you know and uh, we were discussing on some astrological consultation and then i asked him i offered him the lunch that you know let's have lunch together at my home and uh, he said okay let's do it the amount of simplicity babaji the what he was carrying was he was carrying his four chapatis simple chapatis you know uh, and he was carrying some some pickle with him and he opened those four chapatis said this is my lunch you can bring whatever you can take two chapatis i'll also take one or two chapatis from you and we'll have it together right mm -hmm. so i have seen people on mercedes people with that level 
See, simplicity can be there with anyone who is blessed by Shiva. To be very honest. Correct, correct. And then I asked him that. See, I mean, uh, see, I could see from the chart the fifth house was representing Shiva. The East Deva energy was coming uh, off the Shiva. I said, "What do you do?" He said that it's been nineteen years that I am fasting every Monday. Wow. He's not done udapan from past 19 years. You know, wow. and he said that I'm keeping the lifelong uh, upavasa of Monday. Beat Shravana, beat you know, Bhato, beat Ashwin, whatever month. I am wow. on fasting. Right. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, I, I, the only thing I felt was the maximum blessing, the Kripa is coming in a way that he's so simple. Yeah, yes, yes. He, he doesn't he doesn't care about the car. He doesn't care about where he's sitting. He doesn't care about I mean everything is come to him from his prarab. Yes, yes, right? yes. But then he's so so simple. That is the beauty of becoming a Shiva devotee. And Shiva, once you become simple, Shiva will do one more blessing to you. Shiva will promote you, he will promote you to Krishna. Because fifth house, you know, five places from the ninth house is Vishnu. Right? Yes. From the Asta. So he will promote you. So I have seen tons and tons of Krishna devotees who were extreme Shiva devotees in the past. <laughs> I see. Okay. Right? Yeah, in fact, this will... is, yeah, this is very yeah. true, actually. I remember in uh, there was one person I met him, he he said uh he he was in a place i will not take the name but he yeah. was from a place in india where there is a shiva temple and a krishna temple just opposite to each other and then what happened was uh, <laughs> this person used to go to the shiva temple always and uh, initially he was very materialistic you know asking for material yeah. boons and all this and then after some time he got frustrated he got got some of them but still he was frustrated so he asked the pujari that Sir, what's happening? You know, I asked this to Lord Shiva, I got it, but then I also got a lot of frustration. You know, now what should I do? Then he said, You know, oh, why did you waste your time asking for all this mundane, useless, materialistic boons? And then he said, What should I do? He said, You know, you should be selfless, you know, pray to Shiva selfless to, to, <laughs> to give you the best thing, you know, rather than uh, rather than you telling Shiva what you, yeah. you think is best for you. So yeah. Then he started praying to Lord Shiva that please give me the best thing that you think is good yeah. according to you not according to what my mind says yeah. you know yeah so yeah. then <laughs> then suddenly he uh, started gaining some attraction towards lord krishna and krishna. then he started going to uh, the krishna temple and from last uh, 35 years he's a very big uh, krishna devotee so yeah. and even now in shivratri he visits uh, the shiva temple yes. uh, of yes. course and on yeah. during shravan month also so Yes. You are very right. This is very true when you say that. <laughs> anyway, sir, thank you very much. I guess thank it's so quite much, late sir. there in India. And uh, yeah. it was an amazing session. Yeah. And I hope uh, the viewers of Exotic Astrology and your channel also will be delighted to hear about Shravan Man. So as Navniji very beautifully pointed out, whoever is watching this, please utilize this month of Shravan. Uh, to do pavas and as he said not just only mere meager fasting but also being conscious of lord shiva or whichever deity you are most attracted to or which yeah. you identify with if not shiva yeah. and try to read the scriptural texts connected to that deity and especially yeah. connected to lord shiva from shiva mahapuran or yeah. you can also read the Srimad bhagavatam there are many stories of lord yeah. shiva yeah. interacting with the prachetas and so many others stories yes. so either ways utilize this month and even if you're from a different religion whichever tradition you identify and you are inspired by do more spiritual practices for of yes. that tradition all right so yes. and yes of course before we close it please go and check his amazing website and his you. youtube channel you. down below okay so and if nice. you want consultations then you can also approach <laughs> it is such a pleasure on this yeah. channel. Such thank a you sir. thank you see thank you soon Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. see you thank again. you